So, I, you know, I just want to say that when I play back the video, there's all this background noise. But I'm, I'm sitting in a silent room with the door closed. And the only sound I hear is the sound of the computer's fan trying to cool the computer down. That's it. I don't hear anything else. So I apologize for background noise. But today, we get to look at the difference quotient. Now, the cool thing about the difference quotient is it has some subtraction and it has some dividing. And that's why it's called the difference quotient. It turns out that the difference quotient is kind of the foundation of calculus. <laughs> so we, uh, we kind of need it. Um, but first, some bell work. Um, f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 3. Can you please find a f of 2, b f of 0, c f of x, d f of x plus h? Okay, so give it a try. Pause the video, find these things, and come back and tell me what you got. Well, welcome back. When I plugged a 2 in for all the x's, I get 4 plus 4 plus 3 is 11. When I plug a 0 in for all the x's, I got 3. When I plugged an x, well, that's f of x. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to recognize it. But for f of x plus h, I needed to do x plus h squared plus 2 times x plus h plus 3. Don't forget this is foiling. And because this is foiling, this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And if you didn't foil, if you just applied that, you would have gotten that one and that one and not the middle term. So it is not just applying the exponent, it's foiling. So that's what I get when I foil plus 2x plus 2h plus 3. Good. Any questions about evaluating these? I hope not. I hope you're really comfortable with them because now comes the difference quotient. So with the difference quotient, we're going to be given two things. We're going to be given a function to work with, and we're going to be given an expression like f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's an example of a difference quotient. How do I know? Because I see some subtraction, and I see this big division thing. This is a difference quotient. And the way we do a difference quotient is we find this, we find this, we subtract them, and then we divide. Okay? So don't get stressed about this. This is easy peasy stuff. First, what was x plus h? Well, that was x squared plus 2xh plus h squared plus 2x plus 2h plus 3. That's f of x plus h. In fact, I think I'm going to write it down here so I have more of it. It was x squared plus 2xh plus h squared uh, plus 2x plus 2h plus 3. And now what am I subtracting? I'm subtracting all of f of x. And I think it's really important to point out to you that I'm using parentheses here. I have to subtract not just the x squared, which is what a lot of students who write this, you know, minus f of x, and they write f of x, and they say minus x squared plus 2x. But no, you've got to subtract all of those things over h. Okay? So when I distribute this negative through, I'm going to end up with minus x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now, are there any like terms we can combine? Well, I see x squared and negative x squared. I see 2x and minus 2x. I see 3 and minus 3. So now I've got 2xh plus h squared plus 2h over h. And I notice that each of the terms on top has an h in it. So let's GCF factor that out and have 2x plus h, plus 2, over h, and then I can cancel. This is my answer. Don't be scared if your answer has an h in it. That's fine. 
This is my answer. Okay? So find f of x plus h, there it was. Find f of x, there it was. Subtract them, which means distributing that negative throughout. Combine like terms, and then once you've combined like terms, you have to divide by h, which means we're going to factor that h out of the top and cancel. That's the difference quotient. It's not a big deal. So the interesting thing about the difference quotient, or at least I think it's kind of interesting, is that the difference quotient comes in a number of different forms. So here's our f of x, and here's our next difference quotient. There's our next difference quotient. And again, what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to find f of 2. Over here, I'm going to find f of 2 plus h. Step 3, I'm going to subtract them. And step 4, factor out an h on top to cancel with the h on the bottom. Well, great. Let's see what that looks like. Right? We're going to find f of 2, we're going to find f of 2 plus h, we're going to subtract them, and then we're going to divide by h. When I look at this difference quotient, you know, some students look at this difference quotient and they start hyperventilating. <laughs> what? This, so, and actually, I've seen students take this and try and plug it into these x's. That is not what this is saying to do. Right? This is saying find f of 2 plus h, find f of 2, and subtract them. So when I see this difference quotient, to me it's a recipe. It's directions on how to do this. Find this, find this, subtract them, divide by h. Okay, so f of 2 is going to be, excuse me, my dad is calling. Hi, dad. Scotch tape it is. Do you need a dispenser? I, I will get you scotch tape. Do you need a dispenser as well? I'll take care of that for you then. All right. Love you. You know, so when your dad is over 80 and he calls, doesn't matter what you're doing, you should take that call because you don't know how much longer you'll be able to take that call. Right? So, okay, f of 2. Oh, we did this in the bell work. That was 11. Now, what about f of 2 plus h? Well, f of 2 plus h is 2 plus h squared plus 2 times 2 plus h plus 3. And remember, this is foiling. So this is 4 plus 4h plus h squared. There's plus 4 plus 2h plus 3. Are there any like terms to combine? 4 plus 4 plus 3 is 11. There's an h squared. And 4h plus 2h is 6h. Okay, so 11 plus h squared plus 6h. That's f of 2 plus h. And we saw that f of 2 was 11. Okay, so now let's go and do our difference quotient. Excuse me while I give some space on the board. Okay, so f of 2 plus h, that's this, 11 plus h squared plus 6h minus f of 2, that was 11, all over h. So here, step 3 has me doing that subtraction. So now I've got h squared plus 6h over h. And if I factor that h out on top, I have h plus 6 over h, and I cancel, and there's my answer. All right? Okay, next. Oh, remember how the difference quotient comes in different forms? Well, here's the third form. f of x minus f of 2 over x minus 2. Again, it's the same general recipe. Find this, find this, subtract them, divide by this. Well, we found that f of 2 was 11, and f of x is this stuff. So I'm going to have x squared plus 2x plus 3 minus 11 over x minus 2. 
Well, what can we do up top? I guess we can combine like terms and have x squared plus 2x minus 8 over x minus 2. Now, please don't cancel those. Instead, you're supposed to factor up top. And so you get x plus 4, x minus 2, over x minus 2, and look, canceling. And so we end up with x plus 4. That's our answer, x plus 4. Okay? So that's how the difference quotient works. And uh, essentially, what I'd like to do with you is just, you know, one or two more of those. Uh, where we go through all the different forms. And, uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe I'll actually tell you what this is that we're doing um, instead of just saying this is what we're doing. All right, g of x is 1 over x plus 2, and I'd like to know what g of x plus h minus g of x all over h is. So, to find g of x plus h, I have to replace this x with x plus h. So that's going to be 1 over x plus h plus 2. Now I have my minus g of x, 1 over x plus 2, all over h. Ah, complex fractions. You know why we did complex fractions? Because this was coming, and we needed to get ready for it. So I know I need to make a common denominator on top which means I have to multiply by x plus 2 over x plus 2 here, and here by x plus h plus 2 over x plus h plus 2 here. So my new numerator is going to look like this, x plus 2 minus x plus h plus 2 over the common denominator x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2 all over h. Well, instead of leaving it like this with the complex fraction, I'm going to do the flip and multiply thing. And so times 1 over h. Don't forget to distribute here. And so when I do, I get x plus 2 minus x minus h minus 2 all over x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2 times h. So, is, do you see any like terms you can combine on top? Minus 2, plus 2, plus x, minus x. So I've got negative h on top. Oh, look, and an h on the bottom. So that can cancel with that, leaving me that negative up top. So I have negative 1 over x plus h plus 2 over x plus 2. Ta-da! That's my answer. No, really. We, we like that answer. That's a good answer. Okay, that was g of x uh, plus h minus g of x all over h. So what if, oops, x plus, what if instead, this was our difference quotient, g of negative 1 plus h minus g of negative 1 all over h. Let me try that one. Probably want to pause the video. Okay, welcome back. So, what do I need? I need g of negative 1. It's going to be 1 over negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. And I need g of negative 1 plus h. So that's going to be 1 over negative 1 plus h plus 2, which is 1 over 1 plus h. Okay, so I'm going to take this and plug it in there. I'm going to take this and plug it in for there. And I'm going to have 1 over 1 plus h minus 1. Some people like that over h. So now, because I'm subtracting, I need a common denominator. I need to multiply here by 1 plus h over 1 plus h. Don't forget to distribute. And so now... We're going to have 1 minus 1 minus h over 1 plus h over h over 1. And because we've done complex fractions already, I'm going to flip and multiply. So what will that look like next? Well, that will bring me to, when I combine like terms here, 
negative h over 1 plus h times 1 over h. These will cancel, and I'll have negative 1 over 1 plus h. There's my answer. All right. And then the last difference quotient version that we might see is g of x minus g of negative 1 over x minus a negative 1. And so we get x plus 1 on the bottom. Please do this one as well. Okay, so what's g of x? That's 1 over x plus 2. Minus what's g of negative 1? That's 1 over x plus 1. So up top, I'm going to make that common denominator. I'm multiplying by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And don't forget, you need to distribute. So we're going to have 1 minus x minus 2 over x plus 2 over x plus 1. Well, uh, combine like terms, and I get negative x minus 1 over x plus 2. And because I've run out of space, I'm going to do the flip and multiply and have 1 over x plus 1 here. Okay, that's this piece, flip and multiply. And you know what I notice? That's a negative x, that's positive x, that's a negative 1, that's positive 1. We learned that if we factored out a negative from here, that would flip the signs, and then we could cancel. And so we get negative 1 over x plus 2. There's our answer. So that's difference quotient. Or at least that's how I do the difference quotient. But what is the difference quotient? Well, so let's imagine this situation. Let's imagine... Ooh, Let's imagine this situation where we have this line with a point over here called x. And when I plug this x into the function, I get f of x. So, and then I go over a little bit. Let's call that little bit h. So this new x value is x plus h. And the new y value is f of x plus h. Okay? So I have these two ordered pairs. Now, what happens if I use the slope formula here? Well, if I use the slope formula here, I get f of x plus h minus f of x over x plus h minus x, which simplifies to f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Damn, that's our difference quotient. So the difference quotient is this really amazing thing. It's the slope formula. And what we're doing is we're finding the slope between any two points on any function. Actually, we're going to make this really freaky next year. And we're going to let h head to 0. So we get f of x minus f of x, which is 0, over 0. And that is really freaky stuff. So I can't wait to see that with you next year, but to know that this stuff that we're doing right now, it is pre-calculus, so we will be using it in calculus. Um, this difference quotient is really just a way of finding slope. Okay? Finding slope. So, your turn. f of x equals x squared minus x plus 1. So please find f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 all over h. Pause the video, give this one a serious try. I think you can do it. Remember, find that, find that, subtract, divide. Come back when you're done. Okay, welcome back. So f of 2, I got 4 minus 2 plus 1. So for me, f of 2 was 3. And f of 2 plus h? Well, that's 2 plus h squared minus 2 earth minus 2 plus h plus 1. So here I get 4 plus 4h plus h squared minus 2 minus h plus 1. I can't tell you how many people forget to distribute that negative to the h. And so what do we have? We have 5 minus 2 is 3. 
we have 4h minus h is 3h plus h squared. And now following the difference quotient, I need f of 2 plus h minus f of 2. So that's going to be 3 plus 3h plus h squared minus 3 over h. Do you see any canceling? Well, I hope you did. This cancels with that. And so now we have 3h plus h squared over h. When I factor that h out on top, I can cancel, and that's my answer. All right. How about this one? Oops, I erased our f of x. Let's put that back. f of x was x squared minus x plus 1. So how about f of t minus f of 1 over t minus 1? Hey, by the way, you're going to see this when you look in the textbook. Yeah, you don't have to do anything about that. <coughs> so here's the deal. The people who wrote this book are the kind of people who worry a lot. And they worry that you're going to say something like, well, wait a minute. If t equals 1, then this is f of 1 minus f of 1, which is 0. And this is 1 minus 1, which is 0. And that's a problem. But they don't want you to have that problem. So they say, this is great. Let's use this, except we're never going to use it for t equal to 1. So what do I do with that? Nothing. You do nothing with that. It's just a piece of information that makes it so we don't have to worry about a zero over zero case. So you see this? Nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't have to do anything with it. It's just there. It's sort of like, you know, it's a good idea to wear your seatbelt, but some people still don't. Um, and this is saying seatbelt, because we can't get into that zero over zero situation, okay? So you focus on this, and don't be scared when you see that. That's there so that you don't have to worry. Pause the video. Come back when you're done. Okay, so f of 1. Did you get 1 minus 1 plus 1 or 1? And f of t is t squared minus t plus 1, right? It's f of t. It's not f of x. So we have to put t in for all the x's of f of x. And we're subtracting f of 1, which is 1, over t minus 1. Well, when we combine like terms, we end up with t squared minus t over t minus 1. I notice up top I can factor out a t. Hey, look at that. And we end up with t as our answer. Okay, how about this one? Same function. This time let's do f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And again, you're going to see that. And again, don't worry about that. Because if you did have a 0 and plug it in, you'd end up with 0 over 0. And 0 over 0 is really scary, and no one wants to deal with it. So we, the way we don't deal with it is we say, comma, except that x is never going to be equal to 0. OK? OK. So please find this. Come back when you're done. All right, so what did you get for f of x plus h? Did you get x plus h squared minus x plus h plus 1, which I guess I really should have written over here so I would have more place. This h equals x plus h squared minus x plus h. Really, if you don't use these parentheses, so many people forget to distribute to that h plus 1. And so I've got x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x minus h plus 1. And there are no like terms there to combine. However, I need to now subtract f of x. And so I sometimes like writing f of x underneath because when it comes time to subtract, I can just cancel those out. And so what am I left with? Well, on top, I'm left with 2xh plus h squared minus h, all over h, right? All over h. Don't forget the all over h. We can factor out an h on top and have 2x 
plus h minus 1, because h divided by h is 1, and then cancel. So this is our answer. And so what is this doing? Well, I will tell you that we looked at that situation where we imagined, remember we talked about finding the slope between those two points. One was x f of x, and the other point was x plus h comma f of x plus h. And we said, what if we want to find the slope between those? Well, so here's what this difference quotient is. f of x plus h minus f of x over h. What happens if we make that distance that we went over called h? What happens if we let h head to zero? So that the distance between these points becomes zero. There's no distance between those points. Well, what that's going to do is allow us to find the slope at a point on this curve. And this, as h goes away, is the equation that tells me what the slope is at any point on this curve. If I want to know the slope on this curve at 3, I plug a 3 in here. If I want to know what the slope is on here at negative 5, I plug a negative 5 in here. So this is a little slope machine. It tells me what the slope is at any point on this function. That's why we're really keen to use this difference function thing. Okay, so um, in your uh, Office 365 folder, you'll see a page of notes about difference quotient, as this wasn't enough. I did, you know, some more examples for you there. And your homework is just going to be working with some difference quotient problems, and really, don't be freaked out by them. Do notice, though, that this is on two different pages. You've got page 53 in the front of the book and page A47 in the back of the book. Okay? Okay. Take care, everyone. I'll see you in the next video.